professor yes how am, are we supposed to know if the if the function is removable jump or infinite discontinuity so um it's going to be removable when the limit exists you see how for this guy the limit actually existed if the limit actually exists then you can just redefine your function to be equal to the limit so that's the end of the removable case like here there's just a hole i can plug the hole and it makes it continuous it's going to be jump if when you take two one-sided limits you get different answers And it's going to be an infinite limit. It's going to be an infinite limit when you take a one-sided limit and you get a either a positive infinity or a negative infinity. So that's how you can distinguish between the three cases. Removable, the limit exists. Jump, two different limits as you come from either side. Infinite, one of the limits is going to be either positive or negative infinity. Thank you, Professor. Mm -hmm. So um, these questions were kind of all about continuity at a point. So the next thing that we want to worry about is continuity. Um, like we want to know where is it continuous instead of is it continuous at this one point? We're saying, OK, where is the function continuous? Where can I draw the graph without lifting my pen off the paper? And uh, we have a couple of theorems. One theorem we have is that all polynomials and rational functions are continuous on their domains. Um, later on, we have this other theorem, which sort of expands it even further. It's not just polynomials and rational functions, but also root functions and trig functions. So basically all the types of functions that you work with regularly are going to be continuous on their domain. Okay. So, um, so when I look at an example five, I've already actually answered this in the past. So I'm just going to write essentially what I had explained to Reagan a couple of minutes ago. I'm going to say that um, this is removable since the limit as x goes to negative 2 of f of x exists and equals, was it 4 or negative? It was a negative 4. So we can redefine f of negative two to be negative four, comma, and then our function will be continuous. So that's basically what I had just said. Um, let's take a look. You know what? Maybe I could have, maybe I should have actually put this picture down there. Uh, should I move it or should I just copy it? Let's just copy it, I guess. Push this over here. So what we would do is just redefine it to be once I filled in that dot, then um, then it's going to be continuous. Okay. Um, which type of discontinuity do we have uh, there? There we have a jump discontinuity. This guy's a jump discontinuity. Uh, 
since the limit as x approaches three from the negative side of f of x is not equal to the limit as x approaches three from the right side of f of x. And the idea was that we got two different numbers. Got two different finite numbers. Okay. Um, I think if you wanted to see what a graph of this looks like, a graph is going to look something like this. Uh, so this is a four here, and this is like minus five here. And so here's three. I think your graph is gonna look something like this. This guy is a shift, this first one is a shifted parabola. So uh, x, x squared looks like this. That negative in front of the x squared flips it, so it looks like this. And they go up one, two, three, four. So it's a shifted parabola that goes up four. So this guy looks something like this. Oops. And then it stops right there. And then this other graph, um, I think this other graph looks something like, it's a line, it goes through the, um, the y-intercept is like negative eight, and the slope is four, so it's a pretty steep line that goes like this. So this looks something like this. Uh, when I plug in a three, I should get 12, it's four. Okay, it looks like this. It's a very steep looking line like that. So you can check on Desmos if you want to graph it, but very roughly it looks something like this. So we have a jump discontinuity because you come from one side, you come from the other side, you get two different limits. They're both finite numbers. Okay. All right. And then let's look at this last one over here. Um, or not, not last one, but example seven. It says determine whether this, again, this is a rational function, is discontinuous at negative two. If there is a discontinuity, classify it. So does someone want to tell me how I can check if it's discontinuous at negative two? I think I've explained it a few times, but maybe someone wants to unmute themselves and tell me the process. What do I need to uh, check or calculate? So we first check the, and we plug in the negative to see if there's zeros. Okay. Um, Whoever said infinite was correct, that would be the answer. Um, I do like the suggestion. So the first suggestion was, this, what I was really hoping you would say is you should take the limit as x approaches two, uh, sorry, negative two of x minus one over x plus two. And it sounded like, uh, I wasn't sure who was talking there, but, but it sounded like whoever made the suggestion was saying, plug in the number of negative two. And I like that. So when I plug in the number negative two, what am I gonna get? Well, I'm gonna get a negative three in the numerator and in the denominator, I'm gonna get zero. So once you see that I got a negative three divided by a zero, what, what type of limit is this gonna be? Infinite. Infinite limit. Now, once you have an infinite limit, it's not going to be continuous. But for fun, especially because I plan to ask you this on your quiz on um, Wednesday, let's calculate this infinite limit. 
when I want to calculate the infinite limit, I guess, uh, can you describe to me how I calculate the infinite limit? Two-sided. That's right, good. So I'm gonna calculate the limit as X goes to negative two from the negative side of X minus one over X plus two. So what's an example of a point that I'm plugging in? Like X equal to what number? Oh. We have Simon, Audrey, and Luis, and they all give radically different answers. Okay, now I'm starting to see stuff I like. Just, just as a quick reminder, we got this number line here. Um, we got this number line that looks like this. Here's negative two. So when you come this way, you're plugging in like numbers like negative 2.01. When you come from this way, you're gonna plug in numbers like negative 1.99. The key idea is that uh, it's a negative number, so you gotta just to be a little bit more careful. Okay. So we're gonna plug in something like x equal to negative 1.99. When I look at the numerator, the numerator is uh, negative. When I look at the denominator, the denominator is positive. So this is going to um, negative infinity. I can do the same thing, but come from the right side. So I take the limit as x approaches 2 from the right side, x minus 1 over x plus 1, x plus 2, sorry. In this case, I'm plugging a number like x equal to 2.01 and, sorry, negative 2.01. Forgot the negative. It's an egregious error. Oh, sorry, you probably noticed my error. If you didn't. Uh, you switched it. Actually... Yeah, I switched it. I switched it. I switched it. So I'm, I'm actually going to um, just switch this negative to a positive over here and then switch this positive to a negative over here and then I'll be okay. But uh, if you fell asleep for five seconds, you need to fix my error because I went through all this trouble of telling you what the right number to plug in is, and then I plugged in the wrong number. So uh, let's do this one, which is more correct, okay? I even forgot the negative two there, so it's still not right. Negative two from the negative side. And then what are we gonna get? The numerator is gonna be negative, but this time the denominator is also going to be negative. So negative over negative is going to be a positive. So we get positive infinity. And because these two are different, the limit does not exist. So irregardless, the answer is still an infinite limit. I just wanted to review these one-sided calculations because I'm expecting this on um, Tuesday. I mean, um, Wednesday. Okay. Is there any questions about example seven? So I'm always drawing these up. Uh, I didn't draw it this time. But for infinite limits, I'm always drawing these pictures where I go, oh, it could go like this, or it could go like this, or it could go like this, or it could go like this. These are sort of four different types of infinite limit situations we could have. And uh, ours is the, ours is this one. This is example seven. All right, cool.